Ready? Yes, yes, I'm... I'm fine, I'm, I'm ready. Here I come. Oh, here I come. Oh. Leonardo DiCaprio is an American actor who has reached such a level of success that he can afford to work with the best directors in cinema. He is a well-known philanthropist and environmentalist, and his personal life is surrounded by legends. In this video, we will tell you all about it. Leonardo DiCaprio, how Hollywood's main womanizer lives and what he spends his millions on. You've heard the story. Oh, well, I, I will tell you God's truth. God's truth about myself. Leonardo Wilhelm DiCaprio was born on November 11, 1974 in Los Angeles. His father, George, was an underground comics artist and distributor, and his mother, Ermeline, worked as a legal secretary. They named their child after Leonardo da Vinci. The baby kicked in her stomach for the first time in front of this artist painting in the museum. A year after Leo was born, his parents divorced. He stayed with his mother, who had to work at several jobs. The boy's grandmother, Helene Indenbirken, helped with the upbringing. Later, she moved to Germany, but Ermeline often brought her son to visit, so DiCaprio speaks German fluently. As a child, he also spent a lot of time with his father and his new family. At the same time, the future actor grew up in poor areas of Los Angeles, which he calls the ghettos of Hollywood. Since early childhood, Leonardo dreamed of becoming an actor, and it all started with a dance performance on stage at the age of two. He enjoyed studying in theater studios, and at the age of five, he was invited to a TV show for preschoolers, Romper Room, but was soon fired for bad behavior. However, the host of the show denies this. A few years later, DiCaprio was inspired by the example of his stepbrother and began acting in advertising. The first commercial in which he played was about toy cars. The boy was so nervous on the set that he forgot all his lines. Then he advertised Kraft Singles Cheese, Bubble Yum Gum, Fred Meyer Hypermarket, and other brands. It's worth noting that in childhood, Leonardo suffered from obsessive compulsive disorder but was able to get rid of it. He also collected baseball cards and maintained a lifelong passion for collecting. In 1990, the teenager was noticed by television casting managers and cast in such series as Santa Barbara, The New Lassie, and Parenthood. Funnily enough, the agent of the young actor advised him to change his name to Lenny Williams, more familiar to the American ear. Obviously, Leo refused. In 1991, there was a breakthrough in his career when he got a role in the sitcom Growing Pains. In the same year, he made his film debut in the horror flick Critters 3. The following year, Leonardo appeared in the teen drama Poison Ivy. Despite his cute looks, the actor played the role of a bully perfectly. However, the scene where he utters a long monologue was completely cut out, and in the final cut to the film, DiCaprio had no lines. In the drama This Boy's Life in 1993, the actor played the main character, a teenager who got into a difficult family situation. Interestingly enough, during the filming, Leo grew in height, and in some scenes, he had to deliberately hunch over. Leo made friends with his on-screen buddy, Tobey Maguire, in real life too. In the same year, the film What's Eating Gilbert Grape was released, in which DiCaprio played Arnie, the brother of the main character. Arnie, don't be rude. Oh, it's okay. He's just being honest. I don't mind. <laughs> to play his role authentically, he spent several days in a psychiatric clinic and slightly uglified himself. He had a mushroom haircut and wore a special denture that distorted the line of his mouth. For this work, he received Golden Globe and Oscar nominations, as well as $75,000. He was offered a much larger fee for a role in the comedy Hocus Pocus, but he chose the role of Arnie. Leo's first girlfriend, whom the public found out about, was supermodel Bridget Hall, but their relationship didn't last long. After that, he was rumored to be dating Naomi Campbell. Meanwhile, he appeared in the films Total Eclipse, The Basketball Diaries with a fee of $1 million, and The Quick and the Dead with a more modest salary of $150,000. Interestingly enough, Sharon Stone contributed this money because she wanted Leonardo to star in the film. 
In 1996, the drama Marvin's Room was released, for which he received a nomination for the Screen Actors Guild Award, but the main hit was the adaptation of Shakespeare's tragedy, Romeo and Juliet. As from my lips by thine my sin is purged. Then have my lips a sin that they have took? Sin from my lips? O trespass sweetly urged, give me my sin again. The director transferred the action to the modern world and immediately approved DiCaprio for the main male role. Claire Danes became Juliet, and in the final scene at the coffin, she felt the power of her co-star's acting talent. Leonardo uttered his monologue so heartfelt that the girl almost burst into tears and spoiled the take. His work was also appreciated by the Berlin Film Festival jury, which awarded DiCaprio the Silver Bear for Best Actor. The actor came to the premiere of the movie with his new girlfriend, model Kristen Zhang. A little later, he was spotted with another model, Helena Christensen. In 1997, there was the premiere of the movie that made Leonardo DiCaprio a world-famous star, James Cameron's Titanic. Interestingly enough, the actor initially refused the role, but the director was able to persuade him. You're distracting me! Go away! I can't. I'm involved now. You let go and I'm, I'm gonna have to jump in there after you. As for the fee, Leonardo's base rate was $2.5 million, but he also negotiated a nearly 2% share of the proceeds and the actor playing the role of Jack made a total profit of $40 million. Titanic received many awards. DiCaprio himself got the MTV Channel Award and nominations for a Golden Globe and a Screen Actors Guild Award. Working on this project marked the beginning of their strong friendship with Kate Winslet without a hint of romance. By the way, they, along with James Cameron, helped the last survivor of the Titanic pay the bills for a nursing home. At that time, Leo was seen together with actress Demi Moore, models Amber Valletta, and Eva Herzegova. His filmography expanded with the films Celebrity and The Man in the Iron Mask. For the role in the latter, the actor got a golden raspberry. In 2000, Leonardo appeared in the drama The Beach, on the set of which he almost drowned. He and the other actors were washed off the boat by a sudden wave and at the request of the director, he lost 20 pounds of weight. Interestingly enough, DiCaprio agreed to star in this film because negotiations with the creators of another project, American Psycho, stalled over the size of the fee. For his work on The Beach, the actor received $20 million but was nominated for a Golden Raspberry. At the same time, there were rumors about Leo's affair with Paris Hilton since they had a common circle of friends. Soon, the amorous actor began one of his longest relationships with supermodel Giselle Bündchen. They dated for five years and broke up because the girl decided to change her lifestyle. She stopped smoking and drinking alcohol. DiCaprio did not want to give up partying, and their paths diverged. In 2001, Leo appeared with Tobey Maguire in the comedy drama Don's Plum. It was planned to be a short film, and the shooting lasted only two days. The actors mostly improvised and received a symbolic fee, but after the creators released the feature-length film, they sued, and now the film is unavailable for screening in the United States and Canada. The following year, the audience saw DiCaprio in two films, the crime comedy drama Catch Me If You Can with a fee of $20 million and the historical drama Gangs of New York. During the filming of the latter, the actor was trapped in a hotel room in Rome because of the crowds of fans. Scorsese demanded that everything in the film be natural. That's why Cameron Diaz really punched Leonardo DiCaprio in the face on set. The actor's fee was $10 million plus a percentage of the receipts. In 2004, Leonardo played the American entrepreneur and filmmaker Howard Hughes in the film Aviator, for which he received $20 million. An airplane with the ability to fly into the substratosphere, across the country, across the world, now that is a future. Preparing for the role, he spent the whole day with actress Jane Russell, who once starred with Hughes. Later, he admitted that during the filming, his obsessive-compulsive disorder returned. It's worth noting that Aviator became one of the first projects shot by DiCaprio's own production company, Appian Way. The film brought the actor a Golden Globe Award, an MTV Movie Award for Best Actor, as well as nominations for an Oscar, a BAFTA, and a Screen Actors Guild Award. In 2005, after breaking up with Punchin, Leo began dating Sports Illustrated model Barra Faley. They met at a party in Las Vegas and were together until 2011, albeit intermittently. Then, DiCaprio could have played the main role in the film The Good Shepherd, but preferred to star in the crime film The Departed, which was released in 2006. I mean, I mean, he murdered somebody, right? The guy f***ing murders somebody, and you don't f***ing take him, 
What are you waiting for, honestly? I mean, do you want him to chop me up and feed me to the poor? Is that what you guys want? No, yeah, well, that might stick. Will you shut up? This film brought the actor $20 million and nominations for a Screen Actors Guild Award, a BAFTA, and a Golden Globe. A little later, the premiere of the political action thriller Blood Diamond took place. The film featured the actor's mother and grandmother, and he himself gained several pounds of muscle mass for the role. For this film, Leonardo received $20 million and was nominated for a Golden Globe and an Oscar. In the same year, the actor had a dangerous encounter with a great white shark. A 20-foot predator suddenly burst into Leo's cage while he was diving in South Africa. Fortunately, he managed to hide at the bottom, which saved his life. This is not the only case when the celebrity was on the verge of death. His parachute didn't open during a tandem jump with an instructor. The slings of the reserve parachute were also tangled, but they managed to untangle them and land safely. The following films with the Hollywood star were released in 2008. For the action movie Body of Lies, he wore brown contact lenses and dyed his hair black. And in the drama Revolutionary Road, for which he received a Golden Globe nomination, he co-starred with Kate Winslet again. After filming, DiCaprio bought a friend a gold ring with an inscription that remains a secret. Another confirmation of the strong friendship of the two actors was the fact that Leo led Kate to the altar at her wedding. In 2010, the psychological thriller Shutter Island and Christopher Nolan's science fiction action movie Inception were released. Since the foreign nature of the dreamer, they attack like white blood cells fighting an infection. Like they're going to attack us? No. Just you. DiCaprio was the first and only candidate for the role of Cobb. His fee was $59 million. In 2011, he played the head of the FBI Hoover in the movie J. Edgar. To do this, he wore makeup that included a plaster mask over his entire face, various overlays, wigs, gray hair, and a false nose. For his work, Leo received a nomination for a Screen Actors Guild Award, a Golden Globe, and a fee of $2 million. And his annual income, according to Forbes, amounted to $77 million. This allowed him to take the first place in the rankings of the highest paid Hollywood actors. At the same time, the man began dating actress Blake Lively. According to rumors, their relationship lasted five months, after which DiCaprio returned to his favorite type, models. He was seen in the company of Aaron Heatherton, Miranda Kerr, and later with Brazilian Kate Torres and German Tony Garn. In 2012, for the first time in his career, Leonardo played a villain in Quentin Tarantino's film Django Unchained. This role was created specifically for him, and the actor played his heart out on the set. In one of the scenes, he injured his hand on a broken glass but kept playing. This take was eventually used in the film. Room Hilde here is my property, and I can choose to do with my property whatever I so desire. For his role, the actor was nominated for an MTV Channel Award and a Golden Globe, and his fee was $1 million. Leo's next project, released on the screens, was an adaptation of Fitzgerald's novel, The Great Gatsby. In it, the actor managed to work with his childhood friend, Tobey Maguire, again and received a fee of $20 million. Can't repeat the past. Can't repeat the past? No. Why, of course you can. Of course you can. Soon, the premiere of the film The Wolf of Wall Street took place. It was based on the memoir of former broker Jordan Belfort. The actor played the main role and spent many months working together with the prototype of his character. Sail on a boat fit for a Bond villain, sometimes you need to play the part, right? I think it's time you both get the f off my boat. What do you say? <laughs> Leonardo has repeatedly proved his professionalism, but the scene of a kiss with British actress and fashion model Joanna Lumley made him nervous. It took him 27 takes to shoot the scene. DiCaprio's fee was $25 million, and MTV gave him an award for Best WTF Moment. His role was also awarded a Golden Globe and another Oscar nomination. In 2015, Leonardo was believed to have an affair with singer Rihanna, but it later turned out that she was dating one of the actor's friends, and he himself began a short relationship with model Kelly Rohrbach. In addition, DiCaprio starred in the most expensive commercial in history at the time. The short film The Audition about casinos in Macau and Manila brought him $13 million. In December 2015, the action drama The Revenant premiered. I ain't afraid to die anymore. I'm done it already. 
To star in it, Leonardo turned down the main role in the movie Steve Jobs and worked to his limits on the set. The director of the film is an opponent of chroma key, so the actor had to work in freezing temperatures. His hands, feet, ears, and cheeks were numb from the cold. The scene where the main character fights the bear deserved special attention. A stuntman played the beast, and then he was replaced with CGI. Leo's fans were also struck by the scene in which he, being a vegetarian, ate raw beef liver. He had to do it because the fake meat looked unconvincing in the shot. The horse carcass in which the character slept is also real and the actor actually crawled into it. But he said the greatest challenge he faced was silence. The actor spent most of his screen time alone and had to have a silent conversation with nature. And this, according to him, is terribly difficult. All this finally satisfied film experts enough to give Leonardo DiCaprio the long-awaited Oscar for Best Actor, as well as the Golden Globe, a Screen Actors Guild Award, a BAFTA, and an MTV Channel Award. The news about the most prestigious film award flew around Twitter at a speed of 440,000 tweets per minute, becoming the most popular fact about an Oscar award among internet users in history. At the end of his acceptance speech, Leo spoke about climate change and the real threat that humanity poses to the planet. DiCaprio is a well-known environmentalist and philanthropist. Back in the late 1990s, he founded a personal fund through which more than 70 environmental protection projects in 40 countries of the world were financed. The main sponsor of the organization is Leonardo himself. He donated or helped raise more than $80 million to save tigers, protect the ocean, help victims of the earthquake in Haiti, and much more. Besides, the celebrity never misses a chance to talk about the issues. In 2007, he released the documentary The Eleventh Hour about the dangers of global warming, and in 2016, he participated in the creation of the film Before the Flood. Once, during an interview, he was able to name 20 endangered animal species from memory, for which the journalist called him boring. But the UN appreciated the efforts of the actor, appointing the celebrity as a world ambassador on climate issues. Returning to the Oscar, it's interesting to note that after the wild celebration of his victory, DiCaprio forgot the cherished statuette at the club. It was brought to his car later. In the next few years, the actor did not appear on movie screens, but the public followed his personal life with interest. Almost every girl who got into the paparazzi lens near Leonardo was called his new girlfriend. And given that the man loves to party, there was no shortage of young models in his entourage. No one knows for sure whom he really dated and whom he didn't. But it was reported that from the end of 2017 to 2022, he was in a relationship with Camila Moroni, an actress and model from Argentina. DiCaprio returned to the cinema in 2019 in Quentin Tarantino's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, where he played a former star of Western series. Damn it, Rick. I swear to God. Lines and yourself that in front of all those goddamn people. Well, you're drinking all night. Drinking again, eight goddamn. For this, Leo had to go on a strict diet and perform daily push-ups. He was allowed to improvise on the set, which is unusual for Tarantino films, and the actor, in turn, agreed to reduce his usual fee of $20 million by a quarter. According to other sources, he received half of his usual fee, namely $10 million. Leo was also nominated for a Screen Actors Guild Award, a BAFTA, a Golden Globe, and an Oscar. In the same year, the star saved a man during a yacht vacation in the Caribbean. He and his crew received a distress call over the radio from the captain of the other vessel. They joined the search and eventually found the 24-year-old Frenchman who had fallen overboard. It turned out that he had been in the water for at least 11 hours. In 2021, DiCaprio played the role of an astrophysicist in the apocalyptic satire comedy Don't Look Up. You do understand that this is an apocalyptic event. This is, this is a large oh. celestial body heading towards our planet at, at, at speeds that are even... Mindy, I hear you. According to the plot, his character and a student played by Jennifer Lawrence are trying to reach out to politicians and ordinary citizens because of the impending catastrophe. But everyone does not take the warning seriously. The celebrity drew a parallel with real problems that people stubbornly ignore, but which can lead to the extinction of mankind. For his role, the actor was nominated for a Screen Actors Guild Award, a BAFTA, and a Golden Globe. In 2022, Leonardo took third place in the list of the highest paid actors thanks to a $30 million fee in the thriller Killers of the Flower Moon, the world premiere of which took place at the Cannes Film Festival on May 20 this year. Leonardo acted as a co-producer in it and performed one of the main roles, portraying a mentally unstable man. His next project should be the biographical movie Jim Jones and Roosevelt, as well as the adaptation of the book The Wager, A Tale of Shipwreck, Mutiny and Murder. The work on the drama The Black Hand was also announced, but it's unknown at what stage it is now.
It's a long-standing joke in Hollywood that Leonardo has an age limit for his girlfriends, no older than 25 years old. The exception was Gigi Hadid, who is not only older, but also a mother. Recently, the actor allegedly had affairs with young models Victoria Lamas, Eden Polani, and Nor Risk, but sources close to the celebrity denied it. According to his representatives, DiCaprio is currently single and is not in a serious relationship with anyone. But this does not prevent tabloids from adding new names to the list of potential girlfriends, model Rose Bertram, reality TV star Maya Jama, and even Irina Shayk. Leonardo DiCaprio's personal net worth is estimated at $300 million. Yeah, that is a chunk of change, huh? In addition to fees, he receives income from investments in businesses. For example, he became one of the first investors in a company producing vegan artificial meat. According to experts, the actor earned at least $100 million over the years of his career from advertising. He has collaborated with the Tog Heuer watch brand, Chinese Electric Cars, BYD, Jim Beam Bourbon brand, Allbirds Eco-Friendly Footwear Company, and many others. The celebrity also invests in real estate, the total value of which is about $100 million. Among his assets are two houses in the Hollywood Hills, bought for $4 million in 1994, a mansion in Malibu for $23 million, several apartments in an eco-friendly high-rise building in New York, and a house in Palm Springs, California for $5.3 million. DiCaprio also owned a Spanish-style mansion in Los Angeles that was put up for sale for $1.7 million. He also leased a beach bungalow in Malibu for $25,000 to $50,000 a month, but in 2021, he sold it for $10.3 million. It was reported that at the same time, the actor paid $14 million for another mansion in Malibu and the same amount for a house in Beverly Hills. The celebrity has an island in the Caribbean Sea off the coast of Belize, acquired in 2005. Its estimated value is $1.75 million. Leonardo plans to build a modern resort that will be absolutely harmless to the environment. According to some reports, private houses on the island will be sold at a price of $5 to $15 million apiece. DiCaprio has an impressive collection of cars. Range Rover SV Autobiography, Fisker Karma, Lexus RX Hybrid, Porsche Cayenne, Tesla Roadster, Tesla Model S, Toyota Prius, Volvo XC90, Polestar 2, Audi Q7, Mercedes-Benz S500, and BMW X5. What is your favorite Leonardo DiCaprio movie? That was the best acting I've ever seen in my whole life. Thank you. <laughs> if you liked the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything interesting.